decided to drive to the largest forest in my county in hopes of getting back in touch with nature, needing to clear my head. I asked the local forestry office the best place for a quick walk off of the main trails and was directed to this picturesque spot a little way down the road. No reception with the rare bit of blue sky we get in the UK. I was glad I made the spontaneous trip, and as I walked further down the path, I saw a clearing in the trees to my right. Since the plan was to get closer to nature, I ventured into the trees up the beaten path. It was great. I explored the area and listened to the birds as they swooped from branch to branch. Even got a good five minutes of meditation in before I heard what sounded like two animals fighting. I assumed they were just foxes and moved on. I unexpectedly reached the sand road as I emerged from the trees, but decided to walk along it for a moment as I scanned for an entry into the forest on the other side of the road. But as I looked around, I spotted a broad dangling from a bush near the road. Now I'm aware people go to the forest for all sorts of reasons, but this did put me slightly on edge. As I turned around, I heard an electric car making its way up the road. By the time I heard it, it was less than 300 yards away. My instincts told me to hide or just avoid being seen, but there was no time, so I simply gave a polite nod as he passed and made my way in the opposite direction. He parks up behind me, just out of view. I began to make my way off of the road, intending to go explore further, but when I saw the car for a moment, doing a 180 turn and then parking again, something told me to turn around and go back the way I came. As I made my way back onto the road, I spotted this man in a white shirt behind the bush the bra was hanging from. He was going in the direction I just changed course from. I crossed the road and made my way back into the forest I had arrived on the sand road. When I got slightly further in, I turned around to check if the man continued in the opposite direction. But he didn't. Instead, I see he has also crossed the road and is making his way into the part of the woods I entered. By this point, I knew I was being followed. There was no way he coincidentally went one way and then turned it head into this part of the forest that I entered. But I kept my pace brisk rather than running. My physical health can go south quickly. My knees are brittle and my ankles are weak. So rushing could cost me, especially since I still had to reach my car and drive away. As I traveled further, he was always following. Was cursing my luck as I made my way to the end of that section of the forest, just before the path that was after a large patch of grass and shrubbery. But as I looked back, I couldn't see him. I stopped for longer than I should have, scanning the trees and listening intently. But I hear nothing, see nothing. I make my way back onto the path with some relief and turn one last time to check the tree line. When I see he's not there, I begin considering I was overthinking the whole situation. But just as those thoughts cross my mind, I see the man emerge from the opposite side of where he was previously, at the edge of the tree line. He just stared at me. But I wasn't going to take any more chances, so I made my way down the path and back to my car, making sure to get out of there quickly as I knew he would have to head down the same tight country road. I reported the man to the forestry office, but there wasn't much they could do. So that was it. When I paused at the tree line when I couldn't see him, for him to have emerged from where he did when I had made it back to the path, he had to have approached from another angle, an angle that I admittedly wasn't checking. But I'm glad I never went further into the forest. I'm glad I followed my instincts. Otherwise, the only way back would have been through him and God knows what his intentions were. A few years back, I had this really creepy experience with an older coworker of mine that still kind of shakes me to this day. It happened at this place that I'd been working at for a couple of years at that point. The place was a small factory of sorts with only less than a handful of employees, including myself. One day though, my boss introduced us to this new older guy that he'd brought in to start working in the other, newer side of the factory. You see, the factory where he worked had two different sides to it. One side is for beeswax and one side is for wood production. My boss had brought him in because they went to church together and the wood production on the other side had a religious significance. The new older co-worker worked there with us for about one month before he approached me one day and introduced himself to me. He seemed like a nice guy and even came back to give me a Hershey kiss not long after that. A couple of months later, I got asked by our boss if I could go pick up my new older coworker, probably because his car had broken down or something. 
I agreed to it, so my boss asked me if it was okay to give the coworker my phone number so that we could coordinate via text. I said it was fine and went on my way. I brought him back to the factory with no problems. Soon after that, though, I started to get random and sporadic texts from him late at night. At first, the texts were just about us maybe hanging out soon, while simultaneously apologizing to me because he knew he was much older than I. But then the texts started to get pretty pervy, and they would be as long as a mini book. The texts were just long, misspelled, random, pervy compilations. I tried to just ignore the texts, but that only made them start coming more frequently. In the midst of all this, one day, my roommates were scrounging for a ride to a casino only a few miles from our house. I gave them a few dollars for a ride and they said that they'd find their own ride back. So imagine my surprise when they returned only a couple of hours later with their own ride all right. Their ride was my creepy coworker. Not only was I creeped the hell out that this pervy jerk now knew where I lived, but I also didn't know how he came to give my roommates that ride. Was it just sheer coincidence or something more? A few days after that, I went to visit a friend at his apartment that was located on our main street running through our small, historic downtown area. When I came downstairs from his apartment, as he was located on the second floor, I made my usual turn, walking on the sidewalk in front of all the main street shops. As I walked past one of the shops that were maybe two doors down from my friend's apartment, I thought I saw something out of the corner of my eye, but it couldn't be, could it? To my great dismay, it was him, my creepy older co-worker, standing in the doorway of one of the shops and smiling creepily at me from under a black top hat. A couple of weeks after that little incident, I noticed him again as I left my friend's apartment. He was just standing on the sidewalk with that same creepy grin plastered on his gaunt face. Since I had already informed my friend after the last incident, I simply texted him real quick to let him know the creep was back. I got into my car and left after sending the text, so I didn't find out until later that the creepy coworker was gone by the time my friend got downstairs to the sidewalk. At that point, though, the texts were still coming even faster than before. He was even threatening to come by my house if I didn't respond. Long, provocative texts dictating what he'd like to have happened between us if he did just happen to show up at my house. When I would see him during the day at work, though, he would act as though everything were normal, giving no hint of his nighttime persona. After seeing him yet again as I left my friend's apartment, I just so happened to overhear a couple of co-workers of mine standing around discussing how weird our new older co-worker was. Right then, I stepped in and joined the convo, finally showing one of my other co-workers the text messages that the creep had been sending me. I had been working with that particular co-worker for a few years, but I didn't know him too well. He was one of those people who came off kind of grumpy and distant. Still, I told him and my other co-worker not to say anything. They both nodded in agreement, and we went our separate ways to finish up for the day. When I came into work the next day, though, my boss immediately called me into his office. My boss told me that he'd been informed of the situation in the text, and he wanted to see my phone to read them. I told my boss that I didn't want to get anyone in trouble, but he said that was beside the point and that my situation needed to be addressed. My boss also stated that my older coworker had no right or reason to be texting me and talking to me the way he was talking to me. The boss must have had a pretty good talk with him because all the crap stopped from the older coworker after that. The other grumpy coworker of mine apologized to me for saying something to the boss, but I completely understood and I was pretty grateful to him for that. I should have been the one to take the initiative to talk to the boss about it, but I was just too chicken. Fortunately though, that situation seemed to work out for all involved because life went on as usual and everyone involved acted as though nothing had ever happened. Well, I can't say that because that situation caused the grumpy coworker and me to talk more and we started dating. We were together for about three years and then we got married. So creepy old coworker, let's not ever meet again. Or I think my husband will certainly have something to say about it. I was a shift leader at Taco Bell. I was always on the floor with my crew, so I was at the front registers or the drive through register quite often. I was 24, married, with two small children, and I only lived a few streets away from my store I would often walk to work to save gas. A guy a little older than me started coming in a lot. He was always very friendly, almost too friendly. He'd only come in on my shifts, I started to find out, 
And then it turned out he was there for every single one of my shifts. I told my husband, so I don't think he ever came to our house, but he was a shadow at work. Then one day I came in and found him being trained by one of the assistant managers. He tried to get put on my shifts, but I freaked out and immediately went to the office to talk to the store manager. She had no idea about how he'd been in the store all the time. She knew there was a guy, but she didn't know it was him. She was horrified. She promised that she'd keep him away from me until she could get him transferred to another store. She called the store closest while I was standing there and got the transfer. He'd be at our store for that day only. His next day would be at the other store and it would be his home store. She let me take the day off and she called in the other night shift manager. When I came to work the next day, she said that he'd not taken the news well and that he'd have to work at the other store and quit. He came a few more times after that, so I got my husband to sit in the dining room to scare him off. I did not see him again after that.